In this video, we'll look at some of the surface anatomy of the eye, and we'll also look at the internal anatomy. Let's start with the eyelid. The eyelid, as you know, protects the eye. It's also the thinnest skin in the body, interestingly enough. It's lined by something called the conjunctiva. That's a mucous membrane. It lines the inner surface of the eyelid and then folds over and covers the anterior surface of the eye, except for the cornea. So let's look at that more carefully. So here's the eyelid, here's the upper eyelid, here's the lower eyelid. You can see that the eyelids are shut, but then lining the back side of that eyelid and then wrapping over, folding over onto the eye is the conjunctiva. The conjunctiva, however, stops and does not cover the cornea. So if you ever had pink eye or conjunctivitis, that's inflammation of the conjunctiva. The lacrimal gland, that's located up here. That's what produces tears. So when you cry, the tears are released through these ducts. They're released um, into your eye. And then when you blink, the blinking action forces the tears to the medial aspect of your eye, where it collects and it drains through, I think what's called the nasal lacrimal puncta, goes through these canaliculi, and then through this nasal lacrimal sac or duct. And then look where it dumps into. It dumps into your nose. That's why when you cry, you have to blow your nose because the tears come from the lacrimal duct, go through your eye, and then are funneled into your nose. There's six intrinsic eye muscles, and what they do is they rotate the eye. They're easier to, easier to memorize than what you might think. There's the rectus, one, two, three, four of them, and then there's two oblique, superior and inferior. And the location is described in the name, superior, inferior, medial, and lateral. So what is cut right here, that's the lateral rectus. So on the other side would be the medial rectus, that would be towards your nose. And then you have the superior rectus on top and the inferior rectus on the bottom. And then there's two obliques, the superior oblique, which comes around this little notch here and then inserts onto the eyeball. And then you have the inferior oblique, which runs underneath the eye. And those are all responsible for rotation. Let's look at the cavities. There's two. We have the anterior cavity. That's filled with aqueous humor. And then we have the posterior cavity. That's filled with vitreous humor. So the anterior cavity, that's in between the cornea and the lens. This is the anterior cavity filled with aqueous humor. And that's secreted um, by these things called the ciliary bodies and that nourishes and maintains the shape of the eye. And in the posterior cavity, that's back here, this is filled with vitreous humor. And similar to aqueous humor, um, it also helps maintain the, the shape of the eye. The wall of the eye has three distinct layers. Let's look at it. Fibrous layer, which is the outer layer, that's what's here in white. And we have the vascular layer, that's the middle layer, that's what's here in orange. And then we have the nervous layer, or the inner layer. That one is in yellow. It's the retina. We'll get at each of them separately. The fibrous layer, that's the outer layer. That's composed of the cornea and the sclera. So the cornea, that covers the anterior one-sixth of the eyeball. It's transparent, and it refracts light to help focus the image back here on the retina. So there's the cornea. This is what you're enjoying looking through right now. It's transparent, it's clear. And that's what does the majority of the refraction of light. So when light comes in, remember refraction is bending, the light bends, it will bend in the lens as well, ultimately to produce a clear image on the retina. The sclera is continuous with the cornea, but that covers the posterior five sixths of the eye. That's what's called like the white of the eye. It's made of mostly collagen and that protects the eye. It's, it's tough, it's durable. And that um, is an attachment point or an insertion point for the extrinsic muscles of the eye that we just learned. So here's the sclera. It's white and the sclera becomes continuous then with the cornea, which is transparent. So that's the fibrous or outer layer of the eye. Now we have the vascular layer or the middle layer composed of the choroid, the ciliary body, and the iris. So you can see the middle layer here, this is the choroid. This is where we have most of the vasculature, meaning like the blood vessels, arteries, and veins. So that obviously provides um, nutrients and oxygen and delivers 
um, nutrients and takes away waste. It's heavily pigmented, so it's dark, so it keeps the inside of the eye dark. And if we follow it along, the choroid is continuous with this thing right here that's called the ciliary body, and that forms a ring around the eye. Of course, this is a, a section, so you don't really see its ring-like shape, but you can sort of imagine it. Um, it goes all the way around the lens, and then the ciliary body connects to the lens through what's called the suspensory ligaments, which you can see right here. The suspensory ligaments in combination with the ciliary bodies, that's what changes the shape of the lens. And then the iris, that's the colored part of the eye um, that's right here. This pupil is the dark spot. The pupil really isn't an anatomical entity that you could like remove. The pupil is it's just the dark space or the back of the eye that, that you're looking into. So the iris functions as a diaphragm um, that controls the amount of light that comes through the eye. You know how that dilates and constricts depending on if the lights are on or off. So let's look now at, we're still in, in the middle layer of the eye, we're still in the vascular layer, but let's look at the eye from the posterior. So this is, this is a frontal section that's taken, a coronal section, and then we're looking at it this way. So we're seeing sort of like the back of the lens. So this is the back of the lens here, and then these are those ciliary bodies, and then these are the suspensory ligaments, which is holding the lens in place. And what these ciliary bodies do is they contract and relax, and they allow for what's called accommodation. Accommodation is when the lens changes shape, and when the lens changes its shape, it also changes its focal length, and that allows for the image to be focused clearly on the retina. So here we have the ciliary body that's contracted. When it contracts, um, this, is, this is lax, or it's not pulled as tight, and when it's not pulled as tight, this is able to thicken. And then conversely, when the ciliary body relaxes, then these suspensory ligaments are pulled tight and the lens gets thinner. That's called accommodation. The reason why we need to do that again, if this is an object out here, we need the image of this object to fall clearly and sharply on the retina. So the cornea does the majority of bending of the light, remember that's called refraction, and the lens is responsible for sort of fine-tuning that to produce a sharp image that falls on the retina. This is a real image, this is one that can be projected on a screen, as you remember from physics, and it's inverted, and it's smaller. It has to be smaller in order to fit on your retina. Remember, all real images are inverted, and then your brain transduces that and flips the image to upright. The nervous layer, that's the inner layer of the eye, made of nervous tissue. That's primarily the retina. Notice the retina here is continuous with the optic nerve. Where the optic nerve pokes through is called the optic disc or blind spot. But this is the retina. This is the back layer of the eye. It comes around and then almost um, comes in contact or almost goes up to the ciliary body. It's a transparent layer at the back of the eye contains the photoreceptors, which you've heard of as the rods and cones, and it's continuous with the optic nerve. The rods are responsible for um, sensing low light conditions, and they provide black and white type vision. And the cones are sensitive to bright light and color vision. The way I remember it is the alliteration, cones and color go together, two C's. So here's what the retina looks like. The retina is, in fact, not one layer, but has multiple layers to it. Here's the sclera, and then here's the choroid, and this is the direction that light is coming in. So this is inside the eyeball. The light travels through these layers of the retina, through the nerve fibers, through these bipolar neurons, and then reaches the photoreceptors, the rods and cones. This is what it looks like, um, a real histological preparation. So same thing, light's traveling this direction, going past these layers, and then these layers here are where you find the rods and the cones. And then we have the macula. The macula is an area in the center of the retina, about right here. And then in the center of that, we have a little pit or depression called the fovea. The fovea is the point that we have, or the portion in our retina, that's responsible for the sharpest or clearest vision, and that contains only cones. If we were to look at 
um, a view of that through an ophthalmoscope. This is the optic nerve. This is the fovea, sorry, this is the macula, that darker area. And then in the middle of the macula, we have the fovea, where we have a high concentration of cones. Let's just look at this visual pathway very quickly. So we have the left and right eye, but you see that some sensory information, especially from the medial portion of the retina, actually crosses over and goes to the other side of the brain than where it travels to the visual cortex, which is in the back, um, the back lobe of the brain there. So it's interesting that information from um, the right and left side cross and go to the opposite side of the brain.